by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Yes. Among those, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. That's the second sentence of the Declaration of Independence. Today is July 4th. It is our country's 245th celebration. And what we can't get from our government, we can get from our God. Amen. Amen. I want to make the note uh, that if you have an update on our sick and shut-in, please email the church at Bethany at bmbcdallas.org. That's also in your program. And a list of your sick and shut-in are on the back of your program. We ask that you remember them in your cards, calls, and visits and that you update our church secretary at that site. I know that there are more of you watching online than are in church, so we still wanna know how you're doing. Last, I've been asked to read the uh, birthdays for the month. Uh, so Brother John Green celebrated a birthday on the 1st of July. Brother Roderick Hill, or Reverend, excuse me, Roderick Hill Sr. on the 2nd of July, Charles Dupree, July 9th, Sister Kimberly Hunt, July 11th, as is Jolene James, uh, Sister Ann Tucker and Tina Tisdale Burns on July 14th, Brother Nathaniel Tucker, July 15th, Jamie Cole and Brother Richard Johnson, July 16th. We have triplets on July 9th. Uh, Kathy Joe Bear, Sister Evelyn Hall, and I get to share that day with them. Brother C.J. Washington on the 21st. Our pastor, Reverend Albert K. Haynes, on the 23rd of July. And to quote him, it makes it an anointed month. <laughs> uh, Sister Dorothy Dupree on the 27th, Sister Annette Cole on the 28th, and Brother Roger Gaines ends uh, the month on the 29th. We also want to wish happy wedding anniversaries to Brother uh, John Jocelyn and Sister Virginia Jocelyn as they celebrate their 11th anniversary on the 9th. And um, just amazing, but Sister Willie and Rosa Jackson on the 30th will celebrate 52 years. <laughs> to show God's praise for all of these.
Steve after me. We dedicate these uniforms. Okay, now when I point at you, that's what you say. To the glory of God and to the singing of praises to God's holy name and ministering to God's holy people. To the enrichment of our corporate worship experience. To the end that we may forget human personality and see only God in the serving of our worship services. To the end that unity and servants of human service blended together as an usher might portray to us the personal unity and service that is possible with God. <laughs> to the end, to the holy purposes of God, revealed to us in the worship experience of church drawing us into a more intimate, personal relationship with God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you and magnify your holy and righteous name. We love the intimacy, the communion with thee. And so, Lord, as we arrive in worship every Sunday, we look forward to having your spirit touch our hearts. We thank the Lord for ushers who are sensitive enough to your move that they ask that their uniforms be dedicated to thee. And so, Lord, we ask that you would touch these garments as the magnificence of Christ touched the clothes he had on that made them shine and made the their ability to shine through the uniform to be magnified by their appearance. Lord, we pray that thou would use these uniforms to magnify and glorify your own holy and righteous name. And as they address the same, that they have, let them have the same spirit, the same love, the same magnificent, the same heart that would enable us to worship you on a grander and higher level. Lord, we pray that thou would always be in our services, and that as they usher people in, that they are ushering in people closer to your spirit those who don't know you, closer to salvation. Those who just need inspiration, closer to a higher level. Lord, we pray that in all we do and say, your name will be magnified, glorified, and lifted up. We ask these and many, many other blessings, the magnificent, mighty, miraculous, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Give God some praise right
that's going to stand and, and preach your uncompromising word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it is, and every now and then my hands will go up. Yeah. 
forget all of the atrocities that we and our ancestors have had to go through. And at the same time, uh, truth declares that we celebrate our nation because this nation would have not been what it is had it not been for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the strenuous nation were born on the shoulders of black men and women, yeah, even boys and girls, and so never allow others' deficiency to deny you uh, what God has already awarded you. Amen. Um, Sister Chris wisely said, what man have denied us in ages past, God will afford us. Mm. I told y'all I was going to read it, I forgot to read it. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Y'all turn that for a second. That holds something. I'm not going to stay that long, but I'm going to stay that long. Uh, in that uh, 36th verse, Jesus declared, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Son makes you free. All right. Yeah. All right. You are free. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, don't allow others striving to deny you your freedom to not afford you the privilege of receiving the freedom hmm. that can only come from God. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yes, and a lot of us who, who should be free, there are a lot of Christians, church folk, who should be free, but they are under bondage yeah, yeah. because they denied themselves the privilege of receiving the freedom that only can come from the Lord. Do I have a witness here? So then I, I picked up this passage, this passage. Uh, it was directed to this passage when Jesus, the Bible says, took three of his disciples up to the mountain and he was transfigured before their eyes. Jesus uh, shows them a sight that uh, everybody wasn't privileged to see. Do I have a witness here? That as, as we walk with Jesus, he will give us a glimpse, a glimpse of glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, in order to obtain this freedom that comes and emanates from Jesus, you've got to see Jesus and know who he is. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. And as you walk with Jesus, you'll find he, he never tries to show all of his glory. The Bible says no man can look at God and live. Our human makeup makes it impossible for us to gaze on him too long. It's like trying to look at the sun. You can look up there if you want, but if you look there too long, you can literally stare at the sun and it will blind you. Yeah. Yeah. And the brilliance of the sun is a small, minuscule fraction of the majesty of God. Yeah. But as I walk with Jesus, he shows me a glimpse. Every now and then he gives me a flash. But you got to follow Jesus. Everybody don't see it. It's only few. I said, I said uh, Peter, James, and John are, are known as the inner circle. And yeah. Some people say, why would he pick them? I say, he didn't pick them. Uh, they picked him. Yeah. If you, you realize, out of all the disciples, they, they want to hang around with the most. Uh, when a lot of the other disciples were ready to go home, they stayed. Uh, 
they they were there when they just had to be. See, sometimes you don't have to do a whole lot of talking. Sometimes you just be there. Sometimes just being present can make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they had that reputation of being there. But on this particular occasion, they didn't make the separation. He did. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start right now. I'm gonna try to let y'all go because I know y'all got to wait some barbecue. I hope you got some good ones because you know some of y'all are with us and other stuff. Led, led by the Lord. Let's say, led by the Lord. Look at somebody say, led by the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I gotta understand that if I'm led by the Lord, I'm going to see some things I normally would not see. Led by Jesus. I, I can't walk with Jesus and be the same. I say, anytime you find a bored Christian, that's somebody who don't know the Lord. Not a bored Christian. They don't spend a lot, a lot of time in Christ. They don't spend time, a lot of time very clear reading their Bible. It, it, it's, it's difficult to, to be close to Jesus and be sleepy and bored at the same time. All right. You don't have a problem with you going to sleep. I understand that. You just have a problem with you going to sleep in church. Yeah. Yeah. Bible said Jesus slept, but, but you don't ever see where he was sleeping while the Spirit was moving. Right. I feel like preaching, y'all. That, that I need to understand that if I walk with Jesus, I stay close to Jesus, life will take me to a different level. Right. Life will take me to another level. Life, life will take me to some sights I will normally not see. And so, and so I ought to, ought to always want to follow Jesus. The Bible says Jesus took them. He took with him Peter, James, and John. Yeah. And see, that's the first point I wanted to bring over, is that, is, that, is that a lot of times people miss the sights on the mountain because they are too tied to the valley. <laughs> they, 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 they are so connected with relationships. Yeah. They're so connected to the nine, they can't leave the nine to go with the one. Yeah. And you see, and you see, Jesus is not a divider, but when Jesus separates you from the crowd, you need to pay attention. Because I find out God's greatest blessing never comes in the crowd. But Reverend Mike got saved, there was a bunch of folk at the altar, God saved the Lord. Yeah, but God don't save crowds, y'all better hear me today. God saves individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can have a hundred people stand up here and can pray, uh, and ask them to pray for prayer of salvation, but when God saves them, he doesn't save them and say, I'm going to save y'all. He calls each one by name. He yeah, yeah. calls each one when he confesses or she confesses his or her sin. He, he deals with us individually. Even though we may be in a crowd, even though we may be all at church together, he deals with us separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of folks can't get to a higher spiritual level because you're too tied up with your homie, your best friend, your dad. You can't, you can't go to a higher level because you're concerned about what folk are going to say, what people will think about you. you, go, you you're concerned about other folks' opinion of you yeah. instead of your relationship with him. Yeah. There comes the time, I wish I had a witness here. There comes the time when Jesus says, I'm a jealous God. I, I, I demand to be number one. There's a time you got to separate yourself from mama and separate yourself from daddy and separate yourself from your sister, your brother, your aunt. I don't care how close you think you are. You can miss an elevated scene, a vision, a blessing because you're too tied to the valley when the Lord is trying to take you on a higher level. No husband, no husband uh, going to be jealous of his wife because God wants to take you spiritually high. A woman gets jealous because God is first in her husband's life. God put, a man putting God first won't make him a worse husband, it's going to make him a better husband. Yeah. Yeah. A lady putting God first is not going to make her a worse wife, it's going to make her a better wife. So I should be glad when God thinks enough of my wife to want to bring her closer to him. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he's closer to him, she's 
closer to me because I'm trying to get as close to him as I can get. I wish I had a witness here. This matter, this matter, this matter of, of, of being led by the Lord means being separated from the battle. So you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. You can take ghetto out of the joker, but you can't get the ghetto out of them. That sometimes, you know, you know, you can do all you want. You can put a suit, a brand new custom made suit on, and alligator shoes, and you can have all of the fineries. You know, if you don't have it on the inside, you still don't have it. <laughs> Coach, all they got to do is open up their mouth. They, you look like you're a million dollars. But they tell you you're number 50 cents. <laughs> that, 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 I need to understand that, that, that if I've got Jesus on my side, yeah. Yeah. he does something for me and in me. Yeah. And when he separates me from the crowd and wants to give me a special blessing, I need to be willing and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. He'll lead you to a higher level. He'll lead you to a higher level. You must leave the valley in order to get to the mountain top. Yeah. Sometimes you got to leave the valley. Leave the valley. Yeah. Leave the valley. Leave the valley. I was raised, come on, preacher. I was raised in the hood, but, but sometimes you got to leave the hood. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? All right. Now the hood means different things to different people. I you say I was raised in the hood, my daddy get kind of upset, you know. Oh boy, you heard that there. I can say, see, see, the problem with us, Brother Dickerson, is that we have classes even in the ghetto. I say it, man. I know I'm right. See, see, Negroes who got a little house, got a little house. Some of them had nothing but a sharpshooter. They actually not what sharpshooter get on. A little, little sharpshooter. But they still consider themselves superior to folk who stay in the projects. I'm gonna get young I was I was, uh, I was I was counseling a couple uh, in my office and the young man was trying to buy a brick house and I had uh, a friend of mine, we had a deal, he was trying to make some money, and I ended up sacrificing what I could have made trying to get the fella to let my preacher have the house at a discount so him and his wife could have a place to live, a better place to stay in, and not have a financial strain. <laughs> And his wife didn't want the house because the house wasn't brand new. Mm -hmm. She wanted a brand new house. Mm -hmm. They had found a house, and the house that she found, it was, it was a newer house, but it was smaller. It's one of them houses with the bedrooms, you know, you can stand in them over your arm. <laughs> Throw your arm up and touch both walls at the same time, you know. Can't put a, a full size. Barely could get a single bed in there, but she wanted that house. And we were talking, I said, well, baby, this is the I'm not trying to talk. She ain't listening to me, bro. She said, I don't hear all that. She said, a brick house don't mean nothing to me. I've been in a brick house all my life. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you've you been in a brick house? And he said, real shit ready to project. <laughs> 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 see, see, we get internal classes and we start feeling superior to folk because we live on a certain level. We want to look down our nose yeah, as yeah. certain people. But the fact of the matter is, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they had a whole lot of people worse off than we were. But the fact is, we never supposed folk. I mean, you know, black folk in Bob, you know, we lived on Brenham Street. That's a good street, good neighborhood. But it still wasn't nothing compared to uh, uh, 23rd Street in Beaumont. That's where the, the millionaires live, where not billionaires live. And so you get all excited about what I keep telling you. Some of us think we reach now. Baby, you know, it's all relative. See, you want to brag about your million dollars, but if you don't have a billion dollars, you really don't have room to brag right now. Oh, I lost everything. You got to understand, like I said, I, I, I must be willing to leave the valley. Yeah, yeah. And if I am willing to leave the valley and follow Jesus, Jesus has a blessing for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my Lord. Well, I don't know. I see this being led by the Lord. I see this. Let the Lord light up. Let the Lord light up. Jesus included them 
in a special moment. Mm. In an un unusually special moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says he takes them to the mount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the top of the mountain. And he begins to light up. Yeah. And when he lit up, his clothes lit up. As his clothes lit up, they began to show. Illumination was so bright, it it appeared Elijah yeah. and Moses. Yeah. Moses, the great lawgiver. Elijah, the great prophet. Yeah. And they're there talking with each other. Yeah. It, it, it just, this is no ordinary moment. This, this is a moment of, like, uh, like I said, it, it was the, the Greek word really said metamorphosis, where we got our word metamorphosis from. It's, it's like uh, it's like when a caterpillar make a cocoon and come out. Don't look the same, no. but the same DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is like it's like it's like what what happened to Jesus was not a reflection; it was an internal metamorphosis. He's not reflecting light. Yeah, yeah. He is. Them to the mountain. They had walked with him. They had been there before. And when you take them to the mountain, I've shown you a glimpse of who I am. And I'm going to show you a glimpse again. And I've selected the three of you Peter, James, and John. And he just led out. He, he lets out his essence, he lets out his magnificence. Yeah. In the presence of three humans, Peter, James, and John, yeah. Yeah. he lets it out. Yeah. And while he's there, two heavenly, oh, I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. Oh, Elijah, the Bible said, never died, but he shows up at that mount. Yeah. Yeah. Moses, they said, we don't know the way he's buried, but he shows up at that mount. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. And not only does he show up, and not only is Jesus shining, but they know who they are. Yeah. 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 Nobody ever showed them a picture of Elijah. Yeah. They've never seen a movie about, I wish I had a witness yeah. Moses. Yeah. And yet they know it's Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is not an ordinary moment. Yeah. God is in charge.
Yeah. 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 I wish I had a witness here. When grown folk talking, you keep quiet. Yeah. I know y'all want to educate your children and give them the ability to express themselves, but sometimes the best expression you can learn is how to shut up. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing you can come up with is how to keep your mouth shut. I wish I had a witness here. See, sometimes when God is moving, Huh. And God is using somebody. Yeah. Ain't no time you try to butt in. Right. Sometimes you just need to right. shut up. <laughs> Some folks can't stand the spotlight to be on somebody else. Yeah. And when somebody else, God is shining on somebody, they won't. Well, you do that too. No, you need to learn how to shut up. Look at the Bible says, and Peter answered them. Question. Why do you answer when no one has asked you anything? <laughs> Nowhere in the passage do I see God asking anything. Nowhere in the passage do I see uh, Jesus asking anything. Moses and Elijah ain't talking to him. So why is he talking? He but been grown for. Conversation. Y'all need to be quiet. Why y'all like, oh, he's the prophet. He's the prophet. He, he, he's a disciple. He is in the inner circle. He's one of God's servants. But, but he's talking out of turn. I learned none of this one thing my daddy would always try to kind of put on us. You know, I got that from my dad. My mom would kind of talk too much too. But my daddy would say, you know, sometimes he'd learn how to just be quiet. You know? yeah. Well, you can get in less trouble being quiet than you will talking too much. That's another sermon. Yeah, he's talking now. Now, for Chris, for Chris, uh, 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 you, you got to you got to look at the fact that uh, he's confused because he thinks his behavior in the valley is acceptable behavior on the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, man. Talk. <laughs> See, just, just, just a chapter before, in chapter 16, Jesus is walking down the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he asked the question, who do men say? Come on here, somebody. Y'all read your Bible. Who do men say that I am? No, some say you are. You lied to some say Jeremiah, some say you. One of those other prophets. And then, and then, you know, when they got through gossiping, he says, Who you say? What about you? What about you? <laughs> I don't need no gossip, I need you to talk. Don't talk about their relationship, what is your relationship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were quiet. I contend, preacher, they were quiet for a while. And out of the, out of the silence, Peter shows up. Thou art the Christ. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Yes. Thou art the Messiah. Yes. Thou art the chosen one. Yes. Yes. You the son of God. I wish I had a witness here. And, look, and, what, and what does Jesus say? You say, Peter, you didn't get that from school. Hmm. You didn't get that out of your book. Flesh and blood, like we're gonna say. Right. I didn't tell you that. Yeah. Your history, your background had nothing to do with that knowledge. The knowledge you just shared was a revelation. And that revelation came from God. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. 
But, but you got to understand, yesterday's revelation can be out of place in today's situation. That is, revelations don't work on mountaintop. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Because God spoke to you in the valley does not give you the right to speak on the mountain. Especially when God is talking. You don't bust the grown folk conversation because God talked to you yesterday. You still have to learn how to be quiet. Do I have a witness here? Well, my brother and sister, my brother and sister, the Bible said that uh, he, he said, uh, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's fill us three chapters. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, we're yeah. yeah, I say he's talking out of turn. Yes, first of all, the first thing he did, you don't ever put anybody or anything on the same level. You done the same Jesus is in a class hall by himself. I'm witnessing it. Some of y'all know AJC, I was hollering at you and all. No, no, you don't put God on the level with human beings. I need to understand Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is my oldest brother. Jesus is not just a preacher, prophet, he's the a sacrifice, a savior. Yeah. He's a son. He, he's somebody to be emulated. He's not just the son of God. Jesus is God. Yeah. Oh, got me who he was. And, and when you talk about Jesus, you ought to have a certain reverence in your spirit, not to just speak about him any kind of way. No. Don't put his name in the same conversation with somebody else. Put him on the same level. Don't put him in the same committee with somebody else. Jesus is not in the committee. He chairs the committee. He, he's the one. He's the boss. He's the supervisor. So my brother and sister, the Bible said uh, uh, he made a mistake of putting him on the same level with uh, James and I mean with uh, Elijah and Moses. But then I see another problem he has here. He wants to build a valley container. For a mountaintop spirit. You don't build a tent trying to hold a spirit. I wish I had a witness here. You, 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 don't, you don't try to put a ditch of water into a cup. You can't house uh, Jesus in a tabernacle. Jabba like it might work for Moses. It might be okay for your life. But uh, it, it don't work for Jesus. And then when I'm thinking about it, it don't even work for Elijah. See, it worked when Elijah was on earth. But he's not in the valley now. He's been to the mountain. He's been to the mountain top. He's not the same. He's not the same. He, on, on, on the valley, he was just walking. On the mountain top, he's been transmitted. <laughs> well, my brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible said that uh, when Peter got through answering the question, but nobody asked him a question, talking out of turn, that the Bible said God started talking. That's the next problem. It's one thing to speak on the, in the valley because God told you. It's worse when you're talking on the mountain and God had not said anything to you. I contend, brothers and sisters, that uh, Peter, yeah, uh, needs to learn how to listen for the Lord. That's my last section. I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, he he he's on a higher level, but he's not listening 
for the Lord. He, he's talking out of turn because he's not listening from the Lord. And you know, uh, because he talks out of turn, uh, I kind of, me and the Lord talking about it, I kind of think Peter messed up more than we think. Because not only did uh, God start talking, but the Bible declared that God descended in the form of a cloud. That whole situation got cloudy. It means he's it's almost like God had intended to reveal more than he revealed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Peter cut short. Yeah. Which I had to Because he's talking out of turn. God was going to show him a brighter glimpse than the one he showed them. But because he's talking, God uh, cuts the session short. Yeah. He's on a higher level, but he still got a low mentality. Yeah. Have you ever thought, oh, if he'd have just kept quiet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if he'd just stayed quiet for just one more minute. Yeah. Yeah. No telling what God might have revealed to him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if he would have just kept quiet for a little while longer. Yeah, yeah. There's no telling what the Lord might have revealed to his soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, if he would have just kept quiet for a little while longer. Yeah. God had some sights for him to see. Yeah. But he had to talk up. Uh, and while he's talking, God had to get his priorities straight. He talked about three tabernacles, uh, and God says you really should be concerned only with one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about three, but this is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my beloved son yeah, yeah, yeah. in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah, you missed it, you messed it up. Uh, I'm trying to show you a better picture of uh, my son and you mess it up by allowing uh, others to distract you from the main subject. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some people miss seeing Jesus uh, because they're too busy looking at other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some folk are busy looking at dresses and some folk busy looking at the color suits and some folk busy looking at uniforms uh, instead of focusing on Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, it's all right to look good. It's all right to yeah. dress nice. It, it's all right to, yeah, look pretty for the Lord. But don't let your, uh, I wish I had you this. Don't let your green, uh, yeah, your silly heads hinder uh, you from being able to look at Jesus. Don't, don't allow a pretty face to distract you from focusing in uh, on Jesus. Don't, don't let, don't let uh, externals uh, stop you from letting the Lord use you uh, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you uh, got Jesus, you have all uh, that you need. And so you got to learn how to let the Lord lead you as you walk through life. But you take the time to look at Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In other words, I'm satisfied with him right now. You don't need to build nobody else anything. You don't need to call anybody else's Yeah, I'm young, the young preacher, one of my colleagues, uh, he said,
said he ought to stop saying that you need more than Jesus. And he stopped talking about all the other things he thought we needed. And I let him talk when he got through. I said, everything you talking about would be really, yes, I talked about had it not been for Jesus. Unless you're talking about salvation, unless you're talking about Jesus. Ain't no sense in talking about grace unless you're talking about Jesus. Ain't no sense in talking about mercy unless you talk about Jesus. Don't talk about forgiveness until you first talk about Jesus. Don't talk about red moving to a higher level unless you talk about Jesus. Unless you keep your mind on Jesus, he can make a Jesus, and when you see Jesus, 
I said, you look at young guys. This the folk talking, they were talking about this lady who was a widow. Her husband just died. So she got married in less than six months. And I said, so if she'd have married the day after this, you But no, nothing wrong with that. Well, I know y'all got a problem with that. But God said, you, you, you got a contract. Faithful until, come on here somebody. Thank <laughs> you. 
Spirit told me, y'all not sick, but y'all saying y'all not free. You know what's my thing to say to be free, but yeah, there's something else to be free. Yeah, yeah. It's like freedom is not something we talk about, freedom is something we be about, man.
You're here today, and you know.
up and said, this is my blood that is drunk in remembrance of him. Thank you.